Files One News. Now Sparaco needs to report to the Rockland County Jail no later than 5 p.m. on Friday to meet the terms of his sentence. Reporting in Clarkstown, Steve Saunders, Files One News. Let me show you the consistency of the snow, what we're talking about here. And I'm going to pick some up for you. You can see it's, it's kind of light and fluffy, but if you go outside and you try to brush off your car, there is a layer of ice on it now. That's right, Krista. It's called a super crane for a reason. Take a look behind me. It's that red, white, and blue crane. You can't miss it. Today, project officials say it will be lifting a 600-ton piece of the new bridge. It's cold out here, just two degrees here in Hartsdale. Now, take a look. This is a window here on this bagel shop. We've got condensation. Police will be setting up checkpoints to catch anyone using their handheld device behind the wheel. Road crews still have exit 20 blocked off to drivers. They say they'll reopen the exit once the damaged tractor trailer truck is towed away. Now the MTA says these signs will start popping up inside train cars where you'd normally see advertisements. If you see one of these signs, tweet us a photo at Files One News LHV. I'm on Nepperhen Avenue and Executive Boulevard. Water is everywhere. Police have closed off exit 9 on both sides of the Sawmill River Parkway because of the mess. Steve Saunders is in Mount Kisco for us with the latest on the race for governor. Hi there, Steve. Hey, Krista, Governor Cuomo cast his vote at 1030 today here at the Presbyterian Church of Mount Kisco. He says he feels good about today. What is it like for you to be driving on the roads of Yonkers this morning? Oh, I've got one word for you guys. Slippery. It was just so slick. A fire is under investigation after flames gutted a multifamily home in Westchester, leaving the families out in this cold. Files one Steve Saunders has the story for us. My brand new bed is all is, is damaged. Building inspectors were on the scene Thursday inspecting the damage left over by the fire on Locust Hill Avenue in Yonkers. On Wednesday afternoon, the fire spread to Christina Morales' basement apartment. Everything is damaged now. I'm just thanking God that I'm still alive. Thankfully, everyone inside the house at the time was also able to get out alive. The Red Cross says nine adults and three children were among the displaced. <laughs> Take a look at this cell phone video courtesy of the Yonkers Fire Department. These raging flames broke out sometime before 4.30 on Wednesday. Resident Ronnie Green says he owns the house and has lived here for 32 years. There was a fire right here in the doorway mm -hmm. in his court. I don't know how it started or what it is. Of course, the brutal cold was also a concern. A church just down the street worked with the Red Cross providing shelter for the displaced. More than 40 firefighters responded to the three-alarm fire. Fire crews say the intensity of the flames made it difficult to fight the fire from the inside of the house. They did, however, rescue a cat from the burning building. By 7 p.m., fire officials say the main body of the fire was knocked down. Fire investigators are still looking into a cause. As for Christina, she says she'll be staying with family. Keep us in prayer because everybody's on their own now. We're told some of the other residents are currently staying in a hotel, and right now it's unclear whether this house will need to be torn down. Reporting in Yonkers, Steve Saunders, Fios One News. New surveillance video is out showing what led up to the death of a woman in a hit and run on Saturday. Police say it could offer them new clues in the investigation. Fios One Steve Saunders is on Warburton Avenue where this all took place. Take a look at this shocking surveillance footage. The woman on foot is 37-year-old Glynis Pinto of Yonkers. Police say she gets in front of a dark-colored car near Babcock Place and Warburton Avenue around 5.30 Saturday afternoon. That's when the car suddenly surges forward, carrying Pinto down the street on the hood and out of camera range. Police say she fell off and then was run over. Pinto died at the scene. This is heavy on the heart right now. Friends and family have been gathering at this makeshift memorial since it happened. This is my chance to come down here, pay my respects. She was a good woman. Everybody liked her. This man lives in the neighborhood. This neighborhood is going to going to the wolves, and it makes me feel very bad to see a person go through this. We're hearing Pinto may have known the driver, that an argument between her and the person behind the wheel may have led to the hit and run and Pinto's death. Family and friends are hoping the surveillance video will help provide clues in the investigation. Right now, police are still actively searching for the person responsible. Reporting in Yonkers, Steve Saunders, Fios One News. Police all over the state are cracking down on drivers who illegally pass stopped school buses. Fios One Steve Saunders was in Somers today, riding along with Westchester County Police.
Today is Operation Safe Stop Day in New York, a statewide push to crack down on drivers who illegally pass school buses. Here in Somers, Westchester County Police will be following the bus drivers on their routes. Officer Kathleen Cristiano is assigned to Somers Middle and Intermediate Schools. The big message that we want to go out there to all drivers is that if you make that decision to pass a school bus that stopped and actively picking up and dropping off students, we may be right behind that school bus and you will get stopped. Under New York law, if you're caught once, you'll get a ticket ranging from $250 to $400 and also five points on your license. And if you injure a student, you could go to jail for up to 30 days. If police catch you again, the penalties are much worse. It's an everyday problem. Pamela Romeo manages the town's school bus company. As a mother and as a grandmother, and I can't imagine that, that all of these people that are out there, I realize everybody's rushed, but this is precious cargo. These are babies, you know, and you gotta, you gotta stop for those red lights. State records show an estimated 50,000 drivers illegally pass a school bus every day in New York, and over the last 10 years, there have been 53 deaths. The DMV does have some tips for drivers approaching a school bus. Decrease your speed for yellow lights and stop 20 feet from the school bus. Wait until those red lights are off and then look for children before you hit the gas. If you wind up passing and wind up striking a kid, that is a, a consequence that you're going to have to live with for the rest of your life. Police didn't actually catch anyone trying to get past a school bus illegally, but they say it's more about getting the message across to drivers to keep students safe. Reporting in Somer, Steve Saunders, Fios 1 News. Christians around the world go for their Ash Wednesday ashes, which are usually given out in a church, but one West Nyack pastor has a different idea, a drive through for ashes. Steve Saunders reports. Call it a divine accommodation. This is the first time I'm doing this. I'm kind of excited about it. Pastor Daniel Ram waits in his car at the Clarkstown Reformed Church in West Nyack on this cold ash Wednesday. Good morning. He was in charge of the church's drive through from 7 to 9 a.m. for anyone hoping to receive ashes. People can simply drive through the church property and I'll be outside and uh, distribute the ashes while people sit in their car. While it's Pastor Ram's first year as the church's interim minister, this is the second year the church offered drivers their ashes on the go. I think it's a great idea for anyone who cannot maybe make it into church. You have to get to work on time. You're driving in, got your ashes, and now you're off to? I'm off to work. I work in Montvale. It's to make it available to as many people as possible. And then they can drive right to work or to school or to back home, whatever. Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of the season of Lent for Christians, a time of fasting and repentance before Easter. The pastor also held a traditional service inside the church behind me. But as far as people receiving their ashes here outside, church administration said about 20 cars used the drive-through. Reporting in West Nyack, Steve Saunders, Fios 1 News.